and our, our first uh, outdoor adventure on uh, Saturday with the stills. Yeah. Um, we, we just thought we'd have a little bit of a different venue and also people were commenting on the loud buzz so we thought maybe uh, a few geese or a hawk <laughs> or a bird. We wanted to show you the beautiful backyard of where we live and some people had commented, Bill, on some of the noises that they were hearing when we were inside your office. So we thought maybe a few hawks and geese and birds and uh, the fountain wouldn't be as offensive. What do you think? Yeah, I like it. It's different. <laughs> and uh, as long as we do it about this hour, we won't get direct sunlight and that won't produce terrible black shadows. Okay. And it doesn't rain. Um, <laughs> In any case, welcome back. And as you see, we have Bella with us. The other two are somewhere. We are not sure where. <laughs> well, there was an explosive testimony on the House floor just the other day. There were four members of the National Guard who gave very compelling and damning testimony against the Pentagon and Mark Milley, and they named a few other generals. And I remember one of the National Guard members actually said, called out one of the generals and said he flat out lied when they said uh, whatever they, they said about the National Guard. They were prevented, the National Guard was prevented from going to the Capitol on January 6th until after 5 p.m. And Even, remember in January, that means dark. <laughs> and even though, as one of them pointed out, President Trump had tried, according to testimony of other people, to get the mayor and Nancy Pelosi to accept the help of the National Guard way prior to the event. So this was, I found it compelling testimony. Did you? Absolutely. And it's getting almost no play. It's a one day story when the Democrats somehow are able to manipulate these stories into be days and days and days of lies where the truth is just a one-day event. Um, we also have going on with the, in the same uh, January 6th situation, the Supreme Court of the United States is hearing a case about the um, January 6th um, criminal, what, how they're trying to make them all criminals for insurrection, they want right. to put them in jail for life or whatever. And some of the, the Supreme Court um, justices made some really strong points and basically Neil Gorsuch just said, well why was, what was his name, Jamal, the guy who pulled the fire alarm, oh, yeah. why was he not charged and why was this person not charged and why was this allowed, not allowed, and this turns out to be you know, a charge. So there's that going on, and, and it sounds very hopeful to me. Yeah, but I mean, it's gonna it's gonna take years before this is all cleared up and becomes a, a part of the true history of the United States. This is just the biggest talk about insurrection on Nancy Pelosi at Al. Yeah, and at the same time, what. What else is going on is the Senate passed the bill to renew the FISA warrantless spy program. The vote was 60 to 34. The vote should have been 50 to 50, right? Or, or Yeah, in other something. words, a lot of Republicans decided to reinstate FISA and it's spy making. 30 Republicans voted to pass this thing, whatever. Um, I mean, I, we know what it is at 30 Republicans, and it, 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 there's you can easily find out if your senator is one of those who voted to have warrantless, I, except it does have a provision, and we talked about this last time, that the FBI needs to get the approval of Congress if they're going to spy on any members of Congress. So they don't have warrantless spying. We do. Might I remind them we are their bosses? They seem to keep forgetting that. Oh, that's a beautiful sound of that bird. I love that. That's is that the one you're trying to figure out what it is? No, that one I know what it is. It's uh, it's uh, ten o'clock on our bird clock. <laughs> um, so 
Anyway, there are 30 Republicans. And we continue with the war on women. There has really been a war on women for some reason. It, it, it's, it kind of doesn't make sense because the Democrats have always been believe all women and all of this stuff about women and women power and everything else. Don't and, question them when they say things. Right. And yet they abol abolished Title IX. In other news, they continue their war on women. I, I don't understand this. These, this, the Democrats are supposed to be the party for women and believe all women and women are wonderful. And yet the Biden regime has proudly abolished the Title IX program, which what that means, it will now force women to allow biological men to be in their locker rooms, on team sports, and in their bathrooms. So that's the end. First of all, it's scary. It is very, very scary. Oh, I can only imagine that many biological men will pretend <laughs> they are. I mean, can, I, it, it is not, it's funny and it's not funny because these women are going to be raped, they're going to be assaulted. Not only that. But this is the end of women's sports as we right, know it. Right. No woman is ever going to be able to beat a man in sports. And I don't care whether he thinks he's a woman or not. He isn't. And so there's that. And along with that, which is actually a hilarious in one way funny, and it's not funny. In Utah, there were some a school walkout, parents and students alike, because there are these people... The, they call them furries. Furries sounds like a stuffed animal. Well, these people who are not, they're trans animal, I guess. They're pretending to be dogs and cats. They actually have litter boxes in the classroom, and these people are defecating. Do they, the, they use them in the yes, classroom? Yes, yes. Ah. They have litter boxes in the classroom. They're defecating in the litter boxes. They're chasing other students around. They have, some students and teachers have been bitten. They've been scratched. By because, kids? Well, by kids thinking they're dogs and cats. They've been bitten by dogs, scratched by cats. They've I think been... I went to sleep about eight years ago, and now I, this has been a very, a very long dream. Well, and so they are protesting this thing, but, you know, this is the next thing they're going to add to the to the law is you can't, you have, if a person thinks they're a dog, you have to call them you know, Barney Fido. or Fido, yeah, or, you know, whatever, and provide litter boxes. And can you imagine? No, no. This is Utah. This is Utah. The and, Mormon state. The, yeah, exactly. I'm kind of like, what the heck? How, how, how low can we go? I mean, how low can we go with all Snakes? of this stuff? Oh, God. Well, there's some that were rabbits. And, you know, they poop like nobody's business but they also reproduce like nobody's business too so i don't know what's going on with that maybe there should be some some grizzly bears that go and kill all the dogs and cats i'm sorry that's <laughs> that, we need to cut that out <laughs> no it all goes in stupid no. and not <laughs> well it's not i mean really uh, it it is Whatever it, it it this is kind of a distraction in a lot of ways, but it is also where this country is going, and it is sad. This is this is just one more indication of the insanity that is ruling at this moment in time. The, the bad guys want they want this to happen. Exactly, this is what they want. You know, they're also registering illegals to vote in Arizona because they can't have Kerry Lake as senator. I mean, you know, or any other elected position that she would d deem to have. It, it's, it's, this is insane. How, how can they justify that from a constitutional perspective? They can't, that's the problem, Bill. They can't justify any of this from a constitutional perspective. You know, so they're going to make somebody spend $100,000 in legal fees at least. to prove something so stupid is actually illegal. It's exactly, and, and you know, one of the things that's happening is the Supreme Court has ended up with ridiculous cases, and, and some, some of the things that they take on, I'm kind of like, why do they even have to rule on that? But, you know, a lot of our legal, like Jonathan Turley-type people have said 
that Alvin, it is unconstitutional for Alvin Bragg to even be able to bring federal charges. That he, he cannot do that. That's out of his purview. Is that the right word? That's very good. <laughs> <laughs> and so, it, but it, as we said before, they do not care about the Constitution. They do not care about the rule of law. All they care about is destroying America right. and bringing the, the, the population down to, what is it, 500 million? Yeah. Something like that. It's just ridiculous. Half a billion from the current 8 billion. Right. So, yeah. that And, and there's this thing about Rand Paul just recently had uh, talked about the fact that 15, you did a story on that, 15 uh, eight intelligence agencies who knew. Here's the thing that I want to ask about that, Bill. If they knew that the Wuhan lab was doing this thing with the virus, you know, they knew they were getting this thing ready, the Wuhan lab, that we were funding getting it. Getting COVID ready. They right, were right, getting right. COVID ready. We now know who knew that this was actually a fake, and a, a deliberate fake. A, they didn't do anything to stop it, and B, I'm sorry, they were complicit. Right. And that's a little bit scary when 15 intelligence agencies know about something. Oh, but they're spending all their time arresting people who wandered through the Capitol for 10 minutes. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's... Yeah, COVID, not necessarily, I'm not saying COVID was a fake, but the whole, the whole thing about COVID was contrived, let's put it that way, although it did kill people. Right. The last time we actually did our report, we talked about the fact that the Dali ship brought down the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Well, now the FBI has launched a criminal investigation into the Baltimore Bridge collapse. What they're looking into is whether the crew was um, negligent in or violated federal laws were violated in the 22 member crew on board the Dally and the ship's owners according to this is from NBC but you know the FBI is investigating whether the crew members knew the ship had potential mechanical problems and basically did nothing about it now well, they did that's that's true but to say that it was a, a conspiracy is not wrong I, I followed this in fact, I just looked at the latest before we came out here, and it, it clearly it was not a conspiracy. The, the ship just uh, uh, went powerless, and that happens on ships, and there are many reasons it could happen, and one is uh, uh, oil that's been contaminated. Well, except that it makes me think, in my mind, because of how I don't trust the FBI, if they are trying to pin this on the crew, then... I'm wondering why they're throwing the crew under the bus. Plus, it keeps happening. Um, an Oklahoma bridge was shut down that just within a week of that because it was struck by a barge. Um, and then two bridges were reopened after being shut down after 26 barges broke loose and floated down the Ohio River. It's just, to me, it's like the Boeing planes. You have one and then another and then another, but then you also have the food plant explosions. Food plant, yeah. I, 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 I think that in time, we will see that all this stuff is connected and purposeful. There was also another barge that almost ran into a bridge in New York, except it was saved by tugboats. So it just seems that there's a lot going on with this and and we'll we'll just keep watching it um there is some good news a judge in texas tossed out disciplinary action against sydney powell they were trying to have her disbarred the a, ju a texas judge dismissed the petition brought by the state bar of texas uh Commission for Lawyer Discipline alleging that uh, Attorney Sidney Powell had violated legal ethics rules with her work for former President Trump. Now, it is the judge threw it out. It should never have even been considered in the first place. But again, they don't care about the rule of law. They can question election all day long, and it doesn't matter. You all know. they care about is uh, uh, draining our individual money of the, the people who are effective. That's the term they look for, effective. Well, I think they're also trying to scare other people from doing right. the same thing. 
you know that I give those uh, four National Guard members a lot of credit for being willing to come out and be whistleblowers because you know there was another whistleblower that turned up dead just recently and uh, she was a whistleblower against uh, P. Diddy and a few others and so she's dead and we had that whistleblower that was blowing the whistle on Boeing that s supposedly yeah. committed suicide, which he said to a friend he didn't. Well, the, these whistleblowers also mentioned that they were outed deliberately. Yes, but there are a lot more whistleblowers hanging in the wings, ready to come out. I feel sure of that, and they will. And I believe it's gonna. It's it's really easy to say one whistleblower was wrong. It's really hard to say four. It's going to be even harder to say 40. It's going to be, you know, really hard for them to put these things down. But, good news, bad news, <laughs> President Trump being tied up in this kangaroo court in New York has caused him to have to spend time in New York. And he was seen recently in Harlem. And the people in Harlem, in New York City, uh, came out to greet him and no they were not protesting him they were shouting four more years we love Trump we love Trump and it was a large group of people and you know yeah. Biden can't get eight people together and they're usually paid to be there but um, in any case and, and besides Biden was complaining that young children were giving him the finger wherever he went well <laughs> some people <laughs> said that didn't happen I don't know I mean it seems to me He's complaining that he's me meeting protest wherever he goes. Well, you know, that's what you get. Aww, aww. I know, too bad. But um, Stephen Smith, who is a well-known uh, sports commentator on ESPN, made the comment that we've been saying for a long time, and that is, you idiot Democrats, you're just, look what you're doing. You're ensuring President Trump will win the election. I mean, he's pointed out the fact that they're trying this lawfare, and he said, I know why you're doing it. You're doing it because you cannot beat him. You will not beat him at the ballot box, so you're trying to beat him with all this other stuff. And, and so overall, God works in mysterious ways. Well, and he's a Democrat. He's a strong Democrat. And God? No. No. Stephen Smith and has been very outspoken against President Trump. So, yeah, it's backfiring in them, and several of them, uh, James, well, who is it, James Carville? Yeah. Has said the same thing. Um, James Carville is a, you know, a, a rednecky guy, but sometimes he gets it right. He sees th stuff that other people don't see. He does. He, he is uh, not anybody I would want to invite over for dinner, but <laughs> he sees stuff that other people don't, you're right. And, um, what kind of bird is that? I, I, that might be a cardinal. I really don't. Really? It, wow. I don't know. Um, we'll have to look that up later. Uh, but in any case, we haven't heard it. We only had a little, a few geese. When the geese take off or land, they, they are really, really loud. And they can be very. It, it, it can get quite loud. It's well worth running out of the house to see them as they glide in for a landing. Yeah. Especially if there's about 50 of them. They always look to me like they're crash landing. They come in so hard. It's, you know, and you're like, whoo, that looked like it hurt, but of course it didn't. And then we have cormorants here that stand up all day long. Right, rain, <laughs> they snow. stand up. They, what? They swim with their complete bodies underwater. So when you see them, they look kind of like a telescope because you just see this little beak and head. And uh, their wings get so wet that they can't fly. So they have to stand up on something outside the water and hold their wings out to get their wings to dry enough so they can fly. And I swear they stand there all day. You know, I don't know when they eat. <laughs> and there's one one out, there's two right out past the house that are uh, fountains that can be turned on from uh, the other place. And uh, so he'll stand on that fountain and it looks like he's just standing in the middle of <laughs> water. stands there and sometimes there are two of them standing there. It is a very, very fascinating, fascinating place. We have 
of beavers that build dams regularly and regularly we tear up the dams and every night we tear we... up the dams <laughs> every midday and the next morning we run out there to see and sure enough they've rebuilt the entire thing in one night we feel very bad but we can't have dams um, in, in any case it is very very interesting place to live and we just thought we'd show you a little bit of it um, but uh, I was talking about we were oh I, I think um, I guess we should mention it, I don't know. Frank Luntz, who is a pollster, um, from very, very famous pollster, I guess, has suffered a stroke. Oh, really? Yeah. He had, I think he had a heart attack, and then, anyway, he suffered a stroke. I don't know what his status is or his condition. There's also, sorry I didn't look up his name. There is a Democrat member of the House who has been in a coma for 12 days. Mm. He had a heart attack and now he's in a coma. So there's a lot of things going on, I guess, politically and, and every other way. And uh, is there anything else you want to talk about? Judge upholds Georgia's voter citizenship verification requirements. In other words, a judge in Georgia has now ruled that you have to show your driver's license in order to vote. Well, think yeah, of it. I, that uh, yes, and I'm, I roll my eyes because I'm thinking it, a judge shouldn't have to rule that. But thank God he did, and yet it'll probably be appealed and it'll go up the chain, and pretty soon the Supreme Court will be saying no, yes. No, I don't think so. I think that's going to hold. You think that's going to hold? Uh, otherwise, the fuzzies are going to be registering to vote. The furries. The furries, of course. <laughs> fuzzies, Furry. furries. <laughs> the kids pretending to be animals. I it, it, now let me ask you something. As a parent, if one of your children, and I know they wouldn't have, but mine wouldn't either. But if one of your children came to you and said, "I think I'm a dog," and and call me Fido, what would your response? It's be? it's a rare it's a rare word that isn't used these days at all. But it's called corporal punishment. <laughs> <laughs> they would never do that again. <laughs> it, well, it's just like in, dressing inappropriately. It's just, I, I, I don't know, I, I, don't, I don't even know whether to say I feel bad for the parents because the parents are allowing this. It's a sad, sad thing, and honest to Pete, I think I'm going to pray for these children. They need help. Okay. Now? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Father God, I don't even know what to say. So many things in this world, in this country, have gone off the rails. Bring common sense. And we just pray, Father God, for an intervention, particularly with these children, an intervention by your hand to remind them that you created them to be humans. You did not create them to be animals. And Father God, I just pray for the parents that they would wake up for the teachers that they would take the litter boxes. This is just, it's its unsanitary for one, but it's just insane, Father. And we just pray for all of these situations that your hand would move on our country, in our schools, in our court system, and hold up President Trump and keep him strong. In your holy name we pray, amen. Amen. So, is that it? That's it, as far as I know. Okay. You're going to have fun editing it. No problem. I mean, you're sure it's recording editing? out. What's, what, what's editing? Okay. I think we're just going to run it flat. No, we're not either. No, we're not. We're not going to do that. I hate it when you do that. Yeah, but they like it. I don't know They about like that. to see the whole thing. Yeah, well, um... I have no idea what kind of bird that is. I think it was, I thought it was a cardinal, I'm not really sure. Sure it's not a blue jay? No, that's not a, blue jays don't have pretty, pretty songs. They have ugly songs. In fact, interesting thing about blue jays, now that you mentioned blue jays, you got me started. Blue jays will actually imitate the sound of a hawk in order to warn other birds um, the that there is the a, hawks in the area. So that is something to, to keep in the back of your mind. 
sometimes you may think you hear a hawk and it's a blue jay. By the way, just a few weeks ago, we discovered that there is a bald eagle taking up residence here, which we could not have ever hoped for in our wildest dreams, but sure enough. No, and I want to, can I tell the, the story? Because yeah. I, it's a God story. Uh, I was sitting out on our screen porch and looked out and saw a bald eagle perched on a tr tree and I tried to get a picture of it, but he flew too fast. And I literally prayed and said, Lord, please send him back and make him perch long enough for me to get a picture. And the very next morning, he was out on the same limb and this time I managed to walk out down the sidewalk over into the middle of the yard and I got one of the best pictures of a bald eagle that I've had. I've never seen one before so this was a great picture for me but he was in flight over the lake and then I prayed and said Lord bring him back so Bill will see him and lo and behold a few days later we were in my office in the house and all of a sudden Bill shouts eagle and I turned and looked and we got to see an eagle and a hawk fighting and so I just felt like God answered our prayers. That was a pretty stupid move by a hawk. <laughs> <laughs> he says I can take on a crow anytime. <laughs> oh you're not a crow you're bigger. Why? <laughs> you got long fingernails too. Ew. No but the crows do chase the hawks out. Yeah. No way. They, they are When you hear crows going crazy they're usually after a hawk. They will call each other, and you'll watch them. They gather in trees, and they call and call, and then they all go after hawk, and they chase the hawk out. But a mockingbird, one mockingbird can chase away a crow. So there's your no nature lesson for the day. Do you see her? Do you notice her hitting <laughs> me throughout this? <laughs> I'm, 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 he's falling asleep. I'm like, <laughs> No, not really. <laughs> no, I'm just getting your attention. I'm just, you know, it's kind of like, <laughs> I'm not, don't say hitting, patting, okay. touching. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. All right. So, De be sure to it. subscribe down below. And what like else? and share. Like, share, and share subscribe. Share this on all of your social media. For some reason, media. those those three words are out of my memory banks. I never remember to say them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but anyway, and also, if there's there's anything that you would like to suggest as far as our setup here or what we cover, let us know. Yes. We're having a good time. Yes, no. and and this year, I, I'm sorry. One more thing. This year, we do not have bluebirds nesting in the nest box but we have black cat chickadee right. so we'll keep you posted <laughs> okay Bye.